Confusing signals. For Catherine, being given an assignment in the Flight Research Division, whose office was on the top floor of Langley's gigantic hangar, felt like good fortune. She had been elated to work in the pool and calculate her way through the data sheets, but being sent to work closely with the engineers was even more exciting. With just her lunch bag and purse to carry, Catherine went over to the hangar, which was a short walk from West Computing Office. She slipped in the side door, climbed the stairs, and walked down a dim cinder block hallway to the Flight Research Laboratory. Inside, the room smelled like coffee and cigarettes. The engineers smoked and drank coffee all day while they were working. Like West Computing, the office was set up in classroom style with about 20 desks. Most of the people on the team were men, but there were a few other women in the group working as computers. Catherine looked for a place to wait for her new bosses. She went to an empty cube and sat down next to a white engineer. Before she had a chance to say hello, the man gave her a sideways glance, then got up and walked away. Has she done something wrong? No one else noticed what happened, but Catherine didn't know whether his action was meant to be insulting. It could have been because she was black and he was white. It could have been because she was a woman and he was a man. It could have been because he was a professional and she was a sub-professional. Or it could have meant nothing at all. Outside the Langley campus, the rules were clear. Blacks and whites lived separately, ate separately, studied separately, socialized separately, worshipped separately, and, for the most part, worked separately. At Langley, the boundaries were fuzzy. Some of her colleagues were northerners or foreigners who'd never so much as met a black person before arriving at Langley. Others were from the deep south with strong attitudes about racial mixing. It was all a part of the racial relations laboratory at Langley. Blacks and whites were exploring new ground together. Catherine and the other black mathematicians mounted a charm offensive. They made a special effort to always be well-dressed, well-spoken, patriotic, and upright. They were keenly aware that the, interaction, that the interactions that individual blacks had with whites could be implications for the entire black community. Within two weeks, whatever had caused the engineer to move away from Catherine's desk had faded from mind as the two got to know one another. The man was more than pleased when he discovered that his new office mate was a fellow transplant from West Virginia, and they became fast friends. West Virginia never left Catherine's heart, but Virginia, it would soon be clear, was her destiny.